investments of time and material have been placed in Lake Shelbyville. The health of the lake is vital to the community. Steve Nichols shows us through his lens the most recent efforts to improve the health and habitat of the lake. Historically, Lake Shelbyville has been able to sustain aquatic vegetation. The long-term floods, when you start talking about 12 to 14 feet of water over where the plants normally grow, they're not going to get enough light to successfully grow and the long-term summer floods are our major problem with trying to maintain a healthy plant community. Which brings us to the latest effort to improve Lake Shelbyville's aquatic habitat. What we're trying to do is plant a variety of species in the lake, hoping that the conditions and the location we plant are at least good for one of them. But this isn't your run-of-the-mill attempt at establishing vegetation in the lake. We're the first in the nation to be doing these multi-species plantings in the pots. In the three-species pot, you can see the increased biomass and, and diversity that we're putting into the lake in one spot. That'll benefit our success rate tremendously. Aside from water level fluctuations, there's other elements that are against them. Common carp and um, turtles, actually are very difficult on plants. So if they don't have a good environment, they've got a lot of things working against them. So you have to wonder if the risk is worth the potential reward. If the plants take, the benefit is that um, the fish do better, the water quality is better, there's less erosion in the lake. Um, the fish habitat is, is two parts. There's the physical structural habitat part that they can escape predators and or it makes a lot of structure for organisms to grow on, which expands the food base and diversifies the food web. And the price of these plants really couldn't be passed up. The, the plants that we have here um, are all free other than the labor it took to collect and plant them, which was actually very minimal. See, this is round two of the planting effort. There is some American pond weed growing in there, some spatter dot. Some of the earlier plantings seem to be doing pretty well. It'll, it's a long-term project, and, and the ideal, the great thing about plants are is if they are successful, then they will expand on their own, whereas if we drop trees in the lake or we put in our Shelbyville cubes, um, there's unfortunately no opportunity for those to expand on their own. So until these plants begin to spread and grow on their own, the IDNR, the Corps of Engineers, and volunteers will have to do the most unglorious task of planting the vegetation and keeping their fingers crossed, hoping that Mother Nature gives them a fighting chance to establish themselves. The initial prognosis is good. The future floods will determine, unfortunately, the long-term um, benefits of the project or, or success of the project. You know, fortunately, I do have to point out one significant setback we noticed while on this trip. You see, one of the exposures that was placed earlier was completely missing, and we can only assume that someone or some people took the fencing, which exposed the plants to the carp and the turtles. They see our exposures, our fences around the plants. Even if they don't see any plants in there, just leave them alone. They're not fish traps. We're trying to protect the plants from turtles and carp or beavers, anything that might eat them or, or uproot them. And so we need those left in place. And then if they're not successful, we can reuse those materials in another location. So let's all do what we can to help this project along to keep our fingers crossed that the elements of the craters give the plants a fighting chance. Through my lens at Lake Shelbyville, this is Steve Nichols, WAND. Well, Steve shot the video at the beginning of the story a couple years ago. The lake was easily 12 feet over pool that helped crappie spawn, but hurt the plants. So it's kind of a win-lose situation if it floods. Fish thrive, but plants die. Right. So I never realized like how much, you know, the ecosystem, I don't, I don't know much about ecosystems. Right. So <laughs> when Steve tells me all these things, I'm like, it's so, yeah, know. it's so interesting for people like us who we're not used to learning about these sort of things. No. It's really eye-opening how different environmental factors can play a part in things like the Lake Shelbyville, which is so pretty. Yes. <laughs> and all lakes, truly. Right. I mean, because Steve tells us how all these lakes are mm -hmm. seeming to change a little bit over time. Right. So, right. the things you know. <laughs>